kind of thing. Uh, NHS England, London Office, or whatever they call themselves, which is the most furtive organisation, I think. What, they, what, is, what they're noted for is that, the, that they have a huge amount of money. And they have spent in excess of £35 million on management consultants. £35 million. Actually, that's the figure we've seen. We still don't know what the final figure is going to be. Because, of course, they're still, allegedly, producing business plans as we speak, probably. Um, I don't know, sat in some wine bar, sort of making up some numbers to see if they make any more sense than the last one they made up. But, but, but the, 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 the problem about chasing the business plan is that they keep putting the date back. They keep doing it every time. So it turns out now, from the document I quoted from earlier, they had a draft that they were circulating last March. Okay? We t they, we, they said they couldn't share it with us. They still haven't shared it with us, that draft. They are now redrafting it again. It was supposed to be published again next month. Don't hold your breath waiting, is my recommendation, because, you know, who knows? And the, the other thing is, we have been told, you know, that the word has gone out from different parts uh, of the uh, management structure around here, the scheme is dead in the water, because they can't get the money or whatever. It's, you know, it's not going anywhere. So maybe what they're trying to do is just hold off the day. They have to admit that the, uh, the emperor does have no clothes, there is no plan that makes any sense, and they can't proceed. In which case, of course, we still want our hospitals back. And we still want those a and &E's we own. And the other thing we need to pursue is their willful refusal to address the evidence that these plans do not replace the need for hospital care. All of the available evidence points to the fact that they, this cannot work. Okay? They have never produced a convincing answer to this research. There's, there's detailed papers that we have quoted in consultants' reports to them. They've been copied in on all the information that we have. And there is still nothing that proves you can actually replace hospitals with community care. And that the various schemes to target the frequently admitted patients and so on can actually deliver uh, the promised results. So this is another thing we need to keep handing them on. Where is this evidence? They keep saying compelling evidence. Where is it? And, and so on. And we need some evaluations of these pilot schemes that they're running. Because we need to know how much they're costing. For every patient they claim that they're treating in this way, how much is it costing? Is it sustainable? Even in the patch that they're doing it, is it feasible to roll it out across northwest London? And if it isn't, then they need to come clean, scrap the plan, start again. Scrap the plan, talk to the people that know, and start again. And just finally, on the patient groups, absolutely. We need to get push every button here to mobilise to defend our NHS. Because the GP services are under threat just the same as the hospitals. The community services are under threat just the same as the hospitals. Because if you make it less and less possible to recruit staff because the pay is still frozen, if you make it less and less possible to retain staff because the working conditions become worse and worse, then it becomes a condition that you can't maintain those services. So we have a fight on all the levels. And it really is important that everybody who has a way of organising begins to organise, make life as difficult as possible for these people until they see sense, do the right thing. <laughs>